Thanks, Max. Now, look, I want you to call the tape room and get me a good engineer. See if you can spring Mike Jackson. Oh, start calling the Fuller gang and set up appointments for me to do tapes with them. The band leader, Eddie Brand, Carol Larson, anybody else you can think of. And dig through the Fuller tapes and see what you can find. Any kid stuff. Something about that dog of his. Oh, and the famous blood bank broadcast. You know the kind of stuff I want. Right. Eddie Brand is in a recording session. He'll drop by this afternoon or tomorrow. I couldn't reach Carol, so I left a message with her answering service. Okay. Jenny, I'm getting a backache from pounding this typewriter. Bring in your pad and I'll dictate the rest. Okay. And so Herb Fuller brought them together. Eddie Brand, the orchestra leader. Harold Larson, the singer. All the people and all the talents that went to make up the Fuller family. And they were a family with all the warmth and strength and togetherness of a family. All the warmth and strength and what? Togetherness. Togetherness. Yeah, together. Uh, may I say something? Sure. Wow. It'll play, Jenny. You know, I still haven't got an idea for a finish. I need something with impact and suck. Well, maybe you could have them declare war, or invent a vaccine, or discover Mother's Day. Did you ever run into Fuller? Once. I was drafted out of the typist pool one day when Smitty was sick. And? You want to see my purple heart? It's the best offer I've had today. What happened? He made a pass at me. A sort of reflex action type pass. I disappeared back into the typist pool while I was still considering it. I would probably... Joe Harris's office. Just a moment. The old gray skipper of Coogan's Bluff. Yeah, said. I forgot to tell you, Fran Fuller isn't coming down in the ark. She isn't coming down to New York. Well, now, that's just dandy. How am I supposed to do a memorial show without the bereaved widow sobbing her way through a music cue? And how's it going to look if she doesn't come down for the funeral? Don't you worry about that. You worry about the show. I'll take care of the rest of it. Look, since when am I a junior partner? Well, that's exactly what you are, kid. There's going to be a few major changes around here, and you might as well get used to it. Number one, I don't want any more wise guy talk from you. Not to me, anyway. Number two, Start thinking of yourself as a glorified howdy duty out there in front of the audience getting the applause, but just don't forget who's got a hold of the strings. And number three, just remember I can pull that rug out from under your well-shod feet any time I want to. Just don't think you can push me around. Don't get that idea for three consecutive seconds. Okay, Sid. Now, you been up to Studio 41 yet? No, Sid, I haven't had a chance. I've been up to my ears. Okay, I'll get up there. Hey, get some interviews with the slobs. I understand we're jamming them in. Well, now have Jaime send a photographer up there. We'll probably get some pictures of you talking to the great unwashed public. Right, Sid. All right, goodbye. Joe, when you take over the Fuller Empire, do I get a raise? I guess so. Don't you know? No, I don't know. Fuller used to pay the girls himself. He took them off the amalgamated payroll and paid them himself. Out of his own pocket. I'll hit Sid Moore for some more money for you, first chance I get. wondering when you'd get here. I got held up batting out the script. How about that stained glass window? Lovely. We're averaging 250 an hour. 
fact that this keeps up, he's going to be the highest rated corpse in this vital American industry. I've uh, got some booze in the office for the newspaper guys if you want a shot. Well, I better knock off those tapes first. I don't think the Crown Prince should reek of booze at the Royal Wake. <laughs> Me, I believe in all the ads about chlorophyll. Uh, Joe, you mind if I uh, make a suggestion? Oh, go ahead. I think we'd better trade ties. Oh, okay. <laughs> May I ask you your name, please? You have to have my name? Why did you stop? No, you don't have me? to give me your name if my you don't want to. Mrs. Reber. Mrs. Helen Reber. Helen Reber. I live at Florida. Yes, I don't have to have your address. Why am I giving it? You know, if you now, want don't it, I really don't mind Mrs. Reber. I just want to ask you a few questions. Now, this is a recording machine. You mean we're on now? No, on no. the radio? No, radio no, no. now? No, no, no. It's just a recording. It will be on the air later on in the week. Oh, that's nice. Now, why did you come here today? Here? I came down with a group of women. We have a club and we came down together. Why? What do you mean, why? Would you mind repeating that question? I mean, we came down together, a group of women, my club. We go lots of places together. We get separated outside in the crowd. But why did you decide to come here today? Oh, I see what you mean. I told you, we go places together. We decided this was a place to go, together. We used to go to her fullest broadcast together. My friend knows somebody in the ticket bureau had amalgamated, and she used to get uh, 16, 18, 20 tickets at a time. Depended on how many women wanted to go together. How often did you go to the broadcast? Uh, together, you mean? Uh, yes, together. Oh, let me think. Um, it's hard to think when you shove that thing in my face. Every month, every six weeks, like that. In my club, we take turns who should be what you might call the entertainment chairman. The entertainment chairman is like the person who decides where we should go together. And when my friend, the one who knows the person who was in the ticket bureau, was chairman, she used to get tickets for all of us to go to the Herb Fuller shows, sometimes uh, 16, 18, 20, like that. Every month, every six weeks, like that. Did you feel that Herb Fuller was your friend? My what? Your friend. No, I never met him. I never met him in my whole life. I told you. This friend of mine got tickets for his birthday. We haven't met him or anything like that. Thank you like very that. much, Mrs. Reber. Yeah. I'm on the radio. Next week, he says. That was just the recording. Excuse me. Did you just come out of the theater, madam? Yes, I did. And may I ask why you came here today? I came to see him. Rest his soul. You were a fan of his? I should say I was. I never missed him on radio or television, night or day. I should say I was a fan of his. My heart goes out to his poor wife and those dear children of his. Would you say that Herb Fuller was your friend? Friend? A member of the family, you should say. Why? Because he was always there with something cheery or something funny to say when you needed him. If your arthritis was bothering you or you had some other kind of trouble, all you had to do was to turn that dial. And there he was. And before you knew it, you forgot your arthritis or whatever was bothering you. You'll be missed, believe me, by a good many. Thank you very much, Mrs. Elvira Garrigus. Thank you, Mrs. Garrigus. Well, that's a funny looking microphone. Are you broadcasting now? No, just recording. Tape or wire? Tape. So you're pretty bright. We have both in school, tape and wire. How would you two like to go on the air? Sure, sure, we'd like it. Now, what's your name? Mary Brown, with an E on the end. Mount St. Mary's High School. What's the matter with your friend? She's not my friend, she's my sister. She's shy. What's her name? Helen. I see. Now, you were inside? We just came out. And? And what? Oh, you mean, what was it like? Well, it was nice. I mean, all those flowers and the music and that man up there talking. It gave me a kind of spooky feeling. Spooky? You know, like someone was dead. Someone is dead. I know that. Were you fans of Herb Fuller, you and your sister? Not what you'd really call fans, maybe. Not like, for instance, real fans. I mean, we used to see him on the television once in a while. My mother and father thought he was wonderful. I guess you could say they were fans of his. I mean, he was okay, but we weren't what you could call fans of his. I mean, not like, for instance, like you'd be a fan for a singer like Eddie Fisher, Frank Sinatra, somebody like that. 